Levi White is closing in on his 89th year. And in all those years, he's done about everything, from building a railroad to raising a family. Today, he's stronger than most teenagers and thinks nothing of wriggling into an old ore mine back of his house in Clintonville just to have a look-see. With a crystal clear mind for detail, Levi enjoys an afternoon at his kitchen table, reminiscing about his favorite job of all, logging. The process was that uh, these guys would agree to put out, well, they'd give them a certain tract of land that had to be logged off. And uh, uh, they would saw it all down with a crosscut saw and saw it into, uh, well, at that time, they were, they were cutting all 13-foot logs. They quit that later on during my time. But I, I was along uh, when they were still cutting 13-foot logs. All of them were 13-foot. And uh, they'd skid those to, uh, uh, to a header somewhere uh, where they could roll them onto a pair of sleds that, where two horses would, would draw if it was a, quite a distance from the river. And then they had some more he headers by the river, see? And they would dump them off and roll them off in those sleds and, uh, and onto those headers, and they'd put them in a row or along the river so that the logs were the sight of them so they could roll them off and there and into the river when the freshet came through, see? Getting the lumber culled and then skidded to the riverbanks was the easy part. Next came the dangerous part of old time logging, the river run. At the full flood of the spring runoff, the logs were toppled into the river for the wild ride to the mills. But uh, what they called them was the gandy dancers because they were hopping around from one log to another, yeah and they had sharp carts on them. They, they could stop anywhere, you know, or spin a log and stop on it. And, but they had to go fast because if they, if they stepped on one that was too small, it would go down and they didn't want to stay on it too long, you know, just touch it and go. See. Getting the logs to the mill this way paid a terrible price on the environment. And Levi is quick to point out that in later years, he would cull his forest instead of knocking it all down as they did in the old days. Well, I tried to get them to cut it to grow, you know. Uh, that's the way I always cut it, and that's the way I left it when I got done cutting there over there after I'd cut that 150 feet, uh, 150,000. Uh, I would never cut anything at 12 feet high, looking up the tree. Uh, up 12 feet, I'd never cut anything less than 10 or 11 inches. When I got to 10 or 11 inches, that tree stayed. In 10 years, you had a 20-inch log. So I was making money just sitting there growing. I, could, I couldn't get them to do it, they'd strip it. Levi is living testimony to working in harmony with nature, always striving to leave something for the generations to come. That, Levi says, not only makes good business sense, it also makes good environmental sense. As proof, Levi asked the visitor just to look out his kitchen window. And as far as can be seen, is a carpet of green.